Let's do 423 then. Aaron, can I see your book again? Yeah, everybody open up your books, read the problem. Try to get this understood. Write procedures to rotate and scale a point. You know, I was, I picked this problem some time ago and um, now I look at it. I like, I like the problem essentially, but it's, uh, it's a little confusing. You, you can't rotate a point, right? So you can ra rotate a point relative to the origin. You can rotate a point around the origin. Um, or you can rotate a vector. So really this is about rotating a vector. Uh, but the, um, I, the, I don't like the way the author describes the problem. It's, um, uh, it's not, not that well described, I think. But anyway, it's um, basically you have to... Um, This is a P4, what is it? 423. Just going to zip through this. copy these files that existing and let's remember to do the unicode setting And uh, let's set that as the as the startup project. And here we have uh, these things. Let's take these out. Do we need a distance formula? I don't know. Okay, let's see if it builds. <coughs> Looks good. That's it. All right, so I don't think we need this distance formula. So basically, uh, we take a point and we need to, if you read through the problem, uh, we need to create a point and then rotate it. Let's take, uh, call it a point to point. And we'll put it at, did they give it 5-5? Five, five? Is that what he had suggested in the problem? Is it 5-5? Five, five? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. And then... Um, and then we need to have a loop. Uh, so what we do is, uh, let's see how, what he, he says. It's, uh, I think it's a, we do it four, five times, right? So we're supposed to, what we're supposed to do is, um, is, uh, is rotate, scale, rotate, scale, rotate, scale, like that, five times in a row. I'm doing this from memory here, so correct me if I'm wrong. So let's, uh, we need to do something exactly five times. So is it a while loop or a for loop? It's a for loop. So if you know how many times you want to repeat an action, you use a for loop. Although you can, you can construct the same thing using a while loop. For integer i is zero, 
i is less than 5 plus plus i, we're going to rotate the point, scale the point, and display the point. Finished. And we're going to rotate the point by how many degrees? 20 degrees? Ten. Oh, 10 degrees? And scale the point by 0.95. Isn't that it? That's it right there, isn't it? Now display the point is an easy part. We just do uh, C win and we output the point. Let's see if it runs. That's the point. It's 5 5. So there's the problem. That's how I think of the problem at this point. This is what we have to do. We got the, the solution kind of mapped out. We're chiseling away at the problem. So rotating the point, well, let's do this. Let's define a function called rotate. And we're going to rotate the point by the amount 10 degrees. That's how I want it to look. That would be convenient, wouldn't it, if we just did it like that. And to scale the point, it's going to be similar. We'll call a function uh, called scale. And we pass in the point, and we pass in the amount to scale it by. And that would do it right there. We have our loop. We're calling those operations inside the loop. And we're displaying the result inside the loop. So we'll need to define these, these two functions. So this rotate function, does it return a value? Does it need to return a value? Does the book give a, a suggestion on what those functions look like? Can I take a look at that? Yeah. What, is the, what does he, does he say something about that? Well, he shows the functions being called, right? And he says 10 times pi over 180 because it's not in degrees. So this is um, 10 times pi uh, divided by 180 to convert degrees to radians. So the functions don't return anything. They operate on the point. So the rotate function takes a point and it takes an angle. That's it. And the and the scale function takes a point and uh, takes a say a scale factor we'll call it. And uh, here, yeah, let me let me tell you what we need to do. We have to pass that in as a reference because we'll do scale first. This rotating is complicated because of those formulas. So we, we want to operate on the point that got passed into us. We don't want to make a copy of the point and operate on the copy because then the calling code won't, won't get a new point. So that's the reason that we declare the point argument or parameter as a reference. So it's telling the compiler, don't make a copy. 
I want to operate on the data, on the memory of that's that the calling code is accessing or using. Don't make a copy of the point. I want to operate on the point that the caller has. So I'm going to look at the um, the functions of a point again. So there's get x, get y, there's move, there's x and y. These these here are private. It, in Visual Studio, it shows it to you, but they're private. That means we can't access them. They're private member variables. Uh, that's why they have a different color here. But we can move and we can get. So actually, let's uh, let's get the y. Let's get x and y. And this is what we need to do to um, we need to create a new point. Let's do it like this. We create our, our, our scaled point here. And the scaled point will have um, will have x value, x times the scale factor, and then y times the uh, scale factor. So we create a new point. And we take the existing point and uh, we copy the new point into it. As you know, actually, his point class is kind of limited in the operations. You can't write a new x value into the point. You can move it. In fact, we could move it. That's another way to do it. We can use move. So I can only think of two ways to solve the problem. One is to use move, because there's hardly any functions available in the point class. So you have to be pretty, and he tells us, you know, he gave us this function here, the scale. You know, we could have, there's, there's so many different ways to solve the problem. It's just uh, forever. We could have, instead of passing in a reference, we could, have, we could have created a new point and returned that. Could have done it like that. So once again, there's many different ways of uh, solving the problem. This is the, the way that he is <coughs> guiding us to. So once again, we pass in a reference to this point variable, which we modify here at the last line. We, we create a new version of the point, and then we copy it into um, the point that was passed into us. So to create a new version of the point called scale point, we need to get, you know, we need to compute, we need to know its x and y values. So we, it, that's based on the x and y values from the point that got passed in. You know, it's x and y times the scale factor. So let's see, we're calling that here, and uh, we're calling rotate. Rotate does nothing, but scale does something. So let's predict what is it going to look like. And let's move on to the next problem. But in computing, it's like, oh, okay, we got the hypothesis. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna implement it. Let's we'll see if we were right. It's like a proof checking technique. All right, let's see. It looks even, doesn't it? Wait a minute. Let's go to 55. Oh, it is, it is decreasing, isn't it? See, they're all clustering towards zero. Let's, uh, so this is, 
this is 95. Let's make it look. Let's l make it look prettier. So that's there. It's we're moving faster towards the origin. What if we went with uh, 0.5? We're just we're we're cutting the space in half each time. Isn't there a famous Greek race about a rabbit and it and it goes halfway to a point and then it goes another half and then it never gets there? There's some sort of a uh, a faulty argument about how it's impossible to get anywhere at all. Do, do you guys know that one? What's the paradox of what? Paradox of Zingon. Zingon? Xenon. Xenon. Xeno. The paradox of Xeno. There it is. All right, let's put it back on 95. All right, so um, let's get the rotation to work. We're going to do this very similar. So we're going to copy. We we already did the, the, the you know the, the the strategizing here, and this will be the rotated point. Here's the rotated point. So we know that 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 structure works for us to scale. Let's we're reusing that structure here by copying code. And this is the this is the angle. Okay, so this is the um, basically. You know, we're going to modify x and y somehow. So x is something new, right? Actually, it's right there, isn't it? It's um, is it? You know, help me with the formulas here. Is it? Is it? Is it sine times angle times y? What's that? I'm gonna I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the new this is the new x. What's the formula for the the new x value? Let's see your book. Unless you want to read it out to me, you're, you're doing something else. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Um, so it's x. I would say q. Q is the new point, and p is the starting point. And so we take the uh, we take the x and we multiply by cosine alpha, and then we add the y times the sine of alpha. So we take x times the cosine of alpha, which is the angle, and then we add uh, we add y uh, times the uh, the sine of the angle. Make sure I got it right. And then the other one is minus, and then flip those things. So it's minus, and this is a uh, sine, and this is um, cosine. That's the formula to do a rotation. This also, this is a rotation in two dimensions, so you can do the same thing with a matrix multiplication. I mean, typically that's, this is similar, th this is the type of calculation you would do in computer graphics a lot. And this is two-dimensional two computer graphics. So in three-dimensional computer graphics, the formulas are very similar, lots of sines and cosines. But you would typically see that as a matrix multiplication rather than um, done like this. Okay. Let's see if that works. Oh, there's a there's a mistake there. This is the new x and the new y. Oh, I hear rumbling. That means we're at the end here. We're almost there. 
this is the Y. There it is. Hey, that's that's great. Was that worth the work? That was why I picked it because I knew it was going to look neat. Uh, okay, so that's it for uh, for today.